my first sight of the island was from the water, which is quite an interesting way to approach it. The really raw, like Jurassic nature of this place. I think that's what I love. I love that it's in the middle of nowhere. It's got these crazy cliffs, but it's just so gentle. It's like an, a national treasure that's been not yet fully discovered. The pristine waters and beaches, being able to discover the magical wildlife. You never know what you're gonna see in the water. Uh, these waters are sort of not explored as much as many other places in Australia, or if not the world, and you can go out there and see something that's just come halfway around the world and just so happen to swim past you. Unfortunately, Christmas Island sits in the middle of ocean currents that are just dumping plastic from everywhere in the world at the moment, which is, yeah, very unfortunate. Over 90% of the rubbish that's found on Christmas Island isn't from Christmas Island, so it's a really tricky task because we can't, at the moment, control where it's coming from. We can only control what's happening once it's here and it's inundating the beaches almost daily. I'm a resident of Christmas Island, so I feel like I have a responsibility to care for it and make sure it's here for the future for our children. These cleanups can be constant because we can clean up basically the whole beach and it can come back in later tonight and tomorrow that quickly with all the beaches here pretty much. It just depends on which way the currents are coming at that time of year. The level of passion that's on this island is just incredible. So it's little things like that that make it easier to get up and go to work every day and really help get things done. It really gives you hope. Tangaroa Blue were a recipient of an Indian Ocean Territories grant, which was funded through the Australian Government. So we're here this whole week doing a series of beach cleanups. My name is Hayley and uh, I'm here on Christmas Island. I'm the IOT project coordinator for Tangaroa Blue. We're doing a community cleanup and we're just trying to capture as much data as we can on the AMD database to evaluate what we're seeing washing up on the shores at the moment here on Christmas Island. We've got a whole crew from Tangaroa Blue Foundation, a lot of volunteers from the mainland and of course all of our beautiful uh, volunteers from Christmas Island as well. Plastic pollution and marine debris is not a new problem on the island, it's something that all of the residents have been dealing with here for a very long time. We've got lots of incredibly passionate and long-standing volunteers here on the island that have been doing some amazing work. Tangaroa Blue is offering a framework that we can use to sort of help analyse the data that, that all of our community members have been and are already getting uh, for us. Christmas Island is one of the most remote places that Tangaroa Blue work and it does present unique challenges. There are so many safety considerations, working in the heat, hikes in, hikes out, sharp limestone cliffs. We walked into West White and it was a really steep, rugged walk in. Downhill all the way and then and then uphill, climbing back out again and just super hot and humid. West White Beach and the challenges it presented, there was a lot of planning and consideration with locals on how we would attack that in a safe way. Uh, and we didn't even know if it was actually going to happen and the weather gods shone on us and we were able to hike in safely and bag over 150 kilos in a 30 metre stretch of coastline, which is a very high debris density. And then me, Boyd and my dad had a bit of a mission to get back in there. We got Hummer, the dive instructor's boat, and we sent it in to West White because it's so inaccessible. We couldn't carry the bags out when we first uh, went in there. We had to extract the bags a different way so we kind of came up with this float we had like a little rubber dinghy and we we're piling bags in there and then ferrying them out to the out to the boat and we were just three of us were on the beach piling bags on as much as we could yeah it was a really big effort for us to get all that out Katie, the Tangaroa Blue founder, has a saying that she repeats, and I repeat because it's so true, if all we ever do is clean up, that's all we'll ever do. So we could come out here for, you know, decades, every single year, and clean up the same rubbish over and over again, and it'll always be here if we don't change the scenario that leads it to come here. Source reduction is really one of the most important elements of 
what Tangaroa Blue do. Waste is always going to be there if we don't tackle it at the source. So if we look at an item that we're seeing a lot, we can go and talk to the people who produce that item or are generating that waste and talk to them about how to control it, to change it or to somehow restrict it, its movement so that we're not finding it on the beach anymore. By auditing the litter, we're making that clean up count. We have used data in the past to create policy change based around those types of items on a national perspective but also from, from a state perspective in Western Australia. It's interesting to see the changes in the rubbish that we're picking up on Perth beaches with the introduction of things like containers for change and, and straw bans. I've no doubt that some of the information that was collected through AMDI was actually part of the decision and the drive for containers for change. The AMD database is something that Tangaroa use and a whole bunch of other partners around Australia to accurately monitor and, and audit how much rubbish is really washing up on our beaches. It's separated into a whole bunch of different categories just so that we can see very specifically the numbers of the types of things that is washing up on the beaches. More than 20 million items are logged in that database. It's amazing. Research organisations can access it and we can actually use that enormous database to inform policy and investment decisions if necessary. So for this trip, this is the first time I've used the Australian Marine Debris Initiative um, new upgraded app and I've been so stoked with it. It is so intuitive and the best thing about the app is that it's open to everybody. So if you're a mum and a dad and you know you want to take the kids out and do a little bit of education, schools, um, local government authorities, um, researchers, you can all use the app. It's an incredible citizen science tool where you're able to log all of your cleanups and actually see the total amount and the items that you've collected. And yeah, I get a real buzz out of that, seeing how many cleanups have actually put into the AMD app. Plastic never breaks down. It only breaks up into smaller and smaller pieces. So it continues for its entire life cycle and our entire life. The wildlife uh, and the natural environment is a part of our lives every day. And just seeing them, you know, directly being impacted by that plastic is really upsetting. As a marine scientist, I've seen firsthand the impact of marine debris. I've disentangled whales, I've done dissections of turtles and of dolphins and have literally pulled out plastic from these beautiful animals. I'm the program director of OSMAP, the Australian Microplastic Assessment Project. We train local citizens in our program. Yesterday was actually our 60th training day over the last five years that we've run OSMAP, which is really amazing. They're really engaged and passionate local people, and so they'll be able to collect data ongoing, which is really wonderful, and continue to add to our database. What I've learned today just affirms that this is the direction we need to go. We need to analyse where this rubbish is coming from and how we can do better. We can actually do something on the plastics and I think that's a message that is important for people to hear that even if we're only making a small dent, it's still a dent. I'm working for National Parks as their junior ranger coordinator so I work at the school with the kids and take them out into the environment and teach them about our amazing island. My favourite thing about Christmas Island is being around all the nature. Yeah, that is kind of my favourite thing too. We are cleaning to get all the rubbish off the bin and counting them. So we can save the environment and make Christmas Island beautiful. So we can save animals and they don't die. And my hope is that, that they will become scientists and um, keep up their passion for nature. Plastics is a global issue and nowhere is that more apparent than here on Christmas Island. And it's, it's critical that governments across the world come together and have some accountability. There's an international plastics treaty that hopefully will be binding on countries and on corporations so we can actually see some action. It's fantastic that the UN is discussing this and it's high on the agenda and high on the radar, it really needs to be there. It's an exciting time with the Global Plastics Treaty beginning negotiations around the world with the global governments coming together so 
getting data like we're getting today is only going to be beneficial to help those steps and help those negotiations and those conversations really happen around the world and to get people talking and to actually see where the plastic's coming from. So everything we're doing here today is not only beneficial to the environment, but it's going to be beneficial to help those big, bigger conversations and bigger picture items. And I'm hoping that through the Global Plastics Treaty that we're going to see real change, but we'll be able to monitor that through the grant here. So this week has been incredible and I am so proud to say that uh, our crew together with community members have removed over 1.1 tonne of marine debris from the beaches here in just six days. What gives me hope for the future is that when I come to places like this with the people that I've come with, I'm not alone. And sometimes you can get bogged down in the entirety and the complexity of these environmental issues and I'm filled with energy to want to do more and keep fighting for places like this because they exist all over the world. This is just one place that we're highlighting.